in today's class what we are going to do is we are going to understand what is mean effective pressure of a thermodynamic cycle okay a work producing engine so coming to this uh, uh, diagram here okay uh, we have made uh, three diagrams let us quickly go through uh, all the three of them so the first thing of course as as i have told th this is an intake valve this is an exhaust valve okay and you uh, this is the stroke of the engine the stroke of the engine this is the top dead center and this is the bottom dead center that means the piston goes from the top dead center to the bottom dead center so when the piston reaches the top dead center certain amount of volume is remaining inside this and this is this volume is called as the clearance volume of the engine okay so this is the clearance volume okay so the piston goes from this position to this position so when the piston goes up and down it it goes it makes what is called as a swept volume okay so the piston sweeps in the stroke from the bdc to the tdc or vice versa so that is called as the swept volume of the engine now once as you will appreciate here the swept volume plus the clearance volume so when you have the swept volume and the and the clearance volume the totality is called as the total volume the total volume of the uh, of the system so we can define with this uh, with this background we can define what is called as the compression ratio of the engine what is the compression ratio if you define it as a compression ratio as r then it is v maximum divided by v minimum that means the the v at the bdc so the total volume inside which was there at the bottom dead center and when it comes the, comes up the v at the tdc so that is the the volume of the combustion chamber at the at the tdc so if you take the ratio of these two this is called as the compression ratio of the engine naturally as the clearance volumes become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller the the compression ratio keeps on increasing because the denominator is actually decreasing but then there is a limit up to which you can decrease one reason is of course physical in nature because you have these valves here you have uh, maybe a spark plug here uh, and so you cannot really go and hit the wall at the top okay and make this volume zero because if you make this volume zero the pressure is going to uh, uh, the pressure is going to rise infinite so that is not what is reality you cannot do that of course so there is a certain clearance volume which you must always leave okay the main the overbearing reason for this clearance volume is that clearance volume reduces the pressure here increases so that means if a certain fuel at that pressure is not properly burning so one has to see the fuel quality also uh, to decide the uh, the the compression ratio so we will see uh, uh, that a petrol engine uh, will typically have lower compression ratios as against the diesel engines in diesel engines of course we the, it's a compression driven ignition mechanism so we need to increase the pressure and temperature of this of this particular uh, combustion chamber to a point where the diesel can catch fire by itself there is no spark plug okay so therefore the the compression ratios are smaller and therefore the clearance volumes are smaller and therefore the compression ratio are actually higher in a diesel engine as compared to a petrol engine so the the actual the numerical values we will discuss it later on uh, right now it suffices for you to understand that this is the clearance volume smaller the clearance volume higher will be the pressure inside the combustion chamber and therefore higher will be the temperature and the the type of fuel which you would like to burn will primarily guide what will be the clearance volume here and therefore what will be the compression ratio so there is a clear uh, let's say relationship between at what compression ratio you are operating the engine uh, and uh, what is the fuel you are burning okay now Uh, so this is the displacement volume as you can see this is the displacement volume once the piston goes up you have you are left with the clearance volume the clearance volume plus the displacement volume actually is the total volume of the cylinder now let us come to the right figure we have already seen uh, how this figure was made this is a, a, of course a real cycle it is not like a pure auto cycle uh, you know and you can see that heat addition takes place and then it is it is at constant volume to certain location and then there is a deviation from the actual cycle uh, but nevertheless uh, this is a work producing thermodynamic cycle 
uh, what exactly is this cycle we are not concerned right now in this discussion but essentially uh, it is it is like a work producing thermodynamic cycle and the how do you interpret how do you interpret this graph it is a pv diagram so the area which is enclosed within this diagram is actually the 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 total work done the integral pdv or the total work done which is at this now in this cycle as you can see the pressure is continuously changing the pressure is continuously changing okay so if you want to uh, 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 if you want to analyze this cycle uh, you know one way to look at it is of course to get this diagram for a real engine and then do the integration and try to find out what is the area under this curve okay once you know this area you know act actually the w net okay now another way to analyze this engine is or to compare two engines for example is to find what is the mean pressure at which this engine is operating as i told you the diesel engines will operate at a higher mean pressure naturally because you want to sort of burn the fuel by itself uh, by uh, a compression process so a diesel engine typically has higher mean effective pressure or uh, or higher pressure at which on an average they will operate so how do you define this mean effective pressure so what we do is that this is the total work done and this is the total area and this is the total displacement which the piston does from the v max at the bottom dead center to v min at the top dead center so this is the swept volume in which the piston is operating or it is reciprocating so uh, keeping this x axis constant if we if we define a mean effective pressure in such a manner which is a constant pressure in such a manner that the area here okay in this rectangle that means what is the area which is the mean effective pressure which is this distance absolute pressure mean effective absolute pressure multiplied by so this is one side of the rectangle and the other side of the rectangle is v max minus v min so if you multiply with this side you will get the area under this curve and this area under this curve is the mep that is the mean effective pressure one side multiplied by this side which is v max minus v min so essentially you get the area under this curve so if you adjust this mean effective pressure up and down in such a manner that the area under this curve exactly equals to the area under the actual engine in which you are operating so this is an actual thermodynamic cycle and you are actually getting some work done here through a closed cycle so the area under the curve as i told you is the w net so when this becomes equal to this area then you can say that this is the mean pressure at which the engine is operating so you can say that the w net is mean effective pressure multiplied by the area of the piston because you want to convert it into the force and multiplied by the stroke that means the stroke length so that will give you the 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 total work done by the the net work done by the system so essentially the mean effective pressure actually helps us uh, in comparing two engines for example if you know the mean effective pressure you can immediately find out what is the net work done by that engine so you you need to know the mean effective pressure you need to know the bore of the engine that is the piston area from the bore you can find out the area the cross section area of the piston because this pressure is actually operating on the piston so the area of the piston multiplied by the mean effective pressure uh, will actually give you the net force and then uh, taking the definition of the work done force is moving through a distance so multiplied by the stroke will give you the total net work done of the system so you can uh, coming back to this equation w net is equal to mean effective pressure piston area multiplied by the stroke will give you the displacement volume so if it is a circular cylinder piston usually it is a circular piston so you get pi by 4 into the bore into the bore uh, square so pi by 4 d square the d is the diameter of the cylinder liner here uh, multiplied by the stroke length uh, which is also specified in all the engines more or less you know the stroke length uh, because you know the crank radius for example so from there you can uh, calculate the stroke length so mean effective pressure multiplied by the displacement volume uh, will actually give you the work done by the system so uh, in other words the mean effective pressure if you know the work net the net work done by the system then you can divide the net work done uh, by uh, v max minus v min uh, which will give you the mean effective pressure in kilo pascals we are always you going to use si units in this course so essentially we are here using the mean effective pressure units are kilo pascal 
So, uh, to summarize again, uh, the mean effective pressure is the equivalent average pressure which if you would have applied on the same engine, it would have produced the same amount of net work by displacing the piston from the TDC to the BDC. So, this is the definition of mean effective pressure and we will be using that quite often uh, as we go along uh, when we are actually solving the problems and you will see uh, how uh, different engine designs uh, are uh, operating at different mean effective pressures for example and it is a very good indicator of the size of the engine for example uh, or the power of the, the, the net power which is delivered by the engine.